started recording. Okay. Hi there. Uh, I am Merrill Cook. Welcome to the fourth episode of DiffBot's Data Bytes Netcast. Today we have Geniz Kessari, who is the co founder and the chief decision scientist at Graminer. So, uh, Graminer is all about uh, data stories. So, maybe let's start with Geniz's data story. Um, what, uh, what brought you into uh, data? You know, did you see the data light at some point? Um, or, you know, how did you get to where you are today? Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me, Meryl. So uh, my journey with data began when I realized that organizations were struggling with consuming it. So this was about 10 years back. Uh, we were talking to um, some prospects. That was, that was the time when we had just set up Gramna and we were looking for the next big idea. So at that time, what we stumbled upon was there were a lot of uh, Excel sheets and enterprise BI tools. But the biggest challenge organizations were facing was in consuming them. How do you get meaningful insights out of it? And more importantly, the last mile disconnect, that once you have the insights, how do you present it in a way that is easy to uh, make some decisions? Cool. So that uh, interested us quite a bit. And last 10 years has been an exciting journey in trying to solve that. Totally, totally. Is that is that behind the Graminer name? Is it uh, a gram of a consumable entity or no? Okay, that's an interesting um, interpretation I'm hearing for the first time. So this, the origins for the name are a little different. Okay. Uh, initially, I was telling you that we were looking at um, some big ideas. We had started off in a different area. So we were looking at energy analytics and um, rural entrepreneurship in terms okay. of bringing about a change in the social ecosystem. So that way, these are like uh, Grameen is a is an Indian uh, word which uh, has roots like in terms of rural and okay. energy. Ener came from that. So we we strung those together and co coined it Gramna. But eventually, we pivoted from there into data science and uh, insights stories. But uh, this name continues to be a mystery, and <laughs> it is uh, it resonates with people. Yeah, sometimes it's better as a mystery. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, cool. So, what do you you know? That's sort of how you pivoted, how you got to where you are today. T today, do you still enjoy the same things about working with data? Um, or is, there, is it, what's a recent, uh, you know, what do you enjoy with working with data today? Absolutely. So data is something which I think uh, keeps us hooked uh, maybe for even more, uh, more number of years. So I have been um, very uh, curious about the unreasonable effectiveness of data. So today it is, uh, if you look at what, is possible today with data. So it is, uh, you can create a digital replica of an individual based on the various data streams that we have around us. Um, what do we prefer? How do we browse online? How do we commute? And what do we uh, click pictures of and, and save? So when you have all of these streams coming together, you can create a digital replica or a digital twin of yourself. So this has enormous possibilities, both at an individual and for the businesses. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the dangers are also there. You can create, uh, uh, it, it's, it, uh, you can imagine what are the um, potential harmful effects if someone tries to use it to their advantage. But um, the bottom line is that the possibilities are endless and it can be put to a lot of good use. Yeah, yeah, well said. Um, so if you had, if you had one rule or quote on how to think like a data scientist or professional, what would it be? Uh, so my strongest belief when it comes to data science, data analytics is you should think neither about data nor about analytics. You should think business first, start with the business problem. Who do you want to serve business users? And from there you can translate that into a data problem and find out what techniques, what approaches work. And then you'll have to follow through after you finish um, and deliver the insights or the stories, you need to follow through to make sure users are actually using and adopting it yeah. and show the ROI to businesses. So that would be my strongest recommendation. And that's what I'm in all my channels of speaking, writing, that's one message I keep reinforcing. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's data and analytics are just a tool, just a tool and a toolkit. And I, I guess that gets back to your last mile problem. You know, you can't just, Absolutely. you can't just un unintelligibly throw data at something. It doesn't do anything without the right processes. Um, so, so what's your, you know, th th maybe this is already answered, but what's your biggest frustration with data science today? Is it, is it not taking a step back uh, and looking at business needs first or? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. read my mind, right? Okay. Um, so there are, if I look at it, um, there are five steps in the value chain. 
one is planning the um, planning the what the strategy part of it uh, and then getting to the next stage and and working out how to enable it the next level of execution planning and third stage is the actual execution the techniques uh, projects and fourth stage is realizing value from it uh, uh, tracking the roi and fifth stage is radiating and uh, translating that into a behavior a culture across the organization so strategy planning execution value realization and culture so my biggest frustration is there's a lot of focus on execution and uh-huh. only execution uh, there are some people who have been talking about planning like these are the skills you need this is how you set up the team processes and so on so there's some focus there and there's some focus in the last couple of years in roi and value realization mm-hmm. um, so uh, if if i look at it these are uh, three areas which are suboptimally covered whereas when you look at strategy and the long term behavior data driven decision making there's very little focus so i see a lot of opportunities to improve there uh, across the board yeah you see that in content at conferences you know it's yeah it's all technique driven but i mean m- maybe th- there is a shortage of you know professionals or there was for a time right maybe maybe that's helping to remedy that but yeah it's it's a moot point if you don't have the strategy in place um for sure um so what do, what do you see as the biggest uh, opportunity in data at the moment um so the biggest opportunity is bringing about business transformation in today's world digital transformation uh, is uh, is the flavor of the season everyone wants um to make the most of this digital remote world how do you uh, keep your employees engaged how do you reach out to customers and make them happy remotely so uh data can be that the the invisible factor which can drive all of these things so data is the fuel of digital transformation so that i think is the biggest opportunity and for every business that is looking to transform itself and uh, get into i wouldn't use the word new normal <laughs> mm-hmm. i think a lot of people have started hating it so uh, currently using data as a foundation for business it's very important i think that is the biggest opportunity we have so we need to take a step back find out where we, where we want to invest with data and also ask some hard questions are we getting the right value from data ask questions of the data leadership of your data teams to find out can i get more out of my data investments so that focus um can can actually move a lot of things yeah well said yeah um and i i i saw that you you mentioned the word invisible you know data is invisible and i know graminer works at like low code solutions you know do you see i mean like is data better utilized for many many people when it fades into the background like um is is that the importance of low code yeah 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 uh, so there's this uh, famous uh, quote right so techno good technology should be invisible so you should mm-hmm. not even realize that it exists so when it when data and data driven technologies fade into the background the users should uh, feel more comfortable in their own workflows in their yeah. own decision making uh, low code platforms can be a great enabler for that they don't have to really worry about the building part of the platform so yes there is a, a layer there are a set of people who can quickly assemble uh, the components so that the magic can start happen and mm-hmm. it can start happening um, so that's where we uh, the approach we take with uh, gramex our low code platform on how we can quickly get this uh, set up and have it fade into the background so that decision making can a- can be enabled uh, across the organization gotcha yeah yeah um Well hey, it looks like we are about out of time so I'm going to stop recording. We can we can debrief afterwards, but uh but thank you so much. And again, that was Ganiz Kasari. He's the co-founder and chief decision scientist at Graminer, a TEDx speaker, Forbes contributor, and he likes writing and speaking about the future of data for business.